a woman's beauty is often judged by the number of necklaces she wears. Today, let's join in to the Samburu people of Kenya. Hey, join me. Don't scroll the screen up or down. Welcome. This is Camera 17 TV, the home of documentary. My name is O.K. Omoge. The moral is born and bred in Igbo Taku Ojagili. Please don't forget to like, comment, and share this documentary. On their location, the Samburi people primarily reside in Samburi County, which is situated in the north central region of Kenya. On their population, the Samburi people are estimated to have a population of around 250,000 to 300,000 individuals. On their language, the Samburi people speak the Samburi language, which is closely related to the Maasai dialect and is part of the Ma language group. They also speak Swahili and English on their religion. The Samburi worship a god called Unkai associated with rain, fertility, and their livestock well-being. Unkai actively influences the lives of the Samburi, with some children and women experiencing vision and even prophesy. Their religious practices include ritual, like sacrifices, blessings, and initiation, guided by spiritual leaders known as Labon, who provide wisdom and healing on their settlement. The Samburi organized their settlement in villages called Mayanta, made up of clusters of traditional Unkang. Houses constructed from local materials like wood, mud, and cow dung. Cultural expressions in Samburi communities. Samburi clothing is vibrant and distinctive, reflecting their traditional cultural and lifestyle. And men wear colorful shuku clothes around their waist. Accessories with jewelry. Young male warriors or Moran have long orca dye braids. Women dressed in two pieces of blue or purple clothes. One as a skirt and another draped over the chest. Along with necklaces and bracelets. Clothing styles have evolved with modern trends including red tan tan, plate and pattern fabric. On their beadwork, beadwork is a prominent feature where they skillfully craft intricate and colorful designs using beads made from materials such as glass, plastic, or seeds. These beadwork creations, including necklaces, bracelets, and earrings, often carry symbolic meanings related to social status, age, or specific rituals. In Samburi culture, a woman's beauty is often joined by the number of necklaces she wears. On their circumcision, the Samburi practice may circumcision as a traditional ritual for adolescent boys, symbolizing transition from boyhood to manhood. It is a ceremony that only, that only takes place once every 14 to 15 years. When, when a new age sets, they graduate from boyhood to becoming Moran. Which are the warriors on female circumcision? However, is very illegal in Kenya, including in Samburi County. Yes, some subgroups of the Samburi have historically practiced it. Female circumcision, also known as female genital mutilation, involves the partial or total removal of external female genitals and is usually performed on young girls. Uncircumcised girls may face challenges such as rape due to a custom called beading and are not allowed to have children. Every Saburi is circumcised. On their traditional air braiding and red adornment, warriors in the Samburi tribe dedicate numerous hours to braiding each other's hair. The distinctly longest hair is exclusively is exclusive to warriors within this tribe. They adorn their hairs with a red oil They're using clean and red ochre, a natural pigment sourced from volcanic region on their livestock management. The Samburi is there in livestock management 
a key aspect of their culture as they skillfully add cattle's goat and sheep. They navigate large distances to find water and pasture, using their deep environmental knowledge to sustain their edge. Let's take a break for now in our exploration of the Samburi people of Kenya. I am Oki Omoge, your tribe documentarian. Don't forget to like, comment, and also share this documentary. Until I come your will again, peace be unto you.